like some of you might have heard this before. I know I have. That's because this song is called Alice's Restaurant. About Alice and the restaurant. But Alice's Restaurant was never the name of the restaurant. That was always just the name of the song. I guess that's why I still call the song Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in its roundabout, just a half a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Well, it all started about 50 years ago. Woo! 50 Thanksgivings ago. 50 years ago on Thanksgiving, when my friend and I decided to go up and visit Alice at the restaurant. But Alice didn't used to live in the restaurant. She lived in the church nearby the restaurant, in the bell tower, with her husband Ray and father the dog. And living in the bell tower like that, they used to have a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be. Seeing as how they took out all the pews and having all that room, they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. We got up there, found the place was filled with garbage. We decided it'd be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the town down. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction and headed on toward the town dump. We got there. There was a sign, a chain across the road saying, closed on Thanksgiving. And we, we had never heard of a dump being closed on Thanksgiving before. So with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset, looking for another place to put the garbage. And we didn't find one, till we come to a side road. And off of the side of the side road, there was a 15 foot cliff, and at the bottom of the cliff, there was another pile of garbage. And we decided that, well, one big pile would be better than two little ones. And rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. And that's what we did, drove back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Obi. He said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage. Just wanted to know if you had any information about it. And I said, yes, sir, Officer Obi. I cannot tell a lie. I put that envelope under that garbage. It was after talking to Obi for about 45 minutes on the telephone that we finally arrived at the truth of the matter. And Obi said we had to go down and pick up the garbage. We also had to go down and talk to him at the police officer station. Now friends, there was only one of two things that Obi could have done at the police officer station. The first thing was, well, he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest over the telephone, which wasn't very likely and we didn't expect it. And of course, the other possibility was, that, well, he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around the vicinity again, which is what we expected. But when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility we had encountered upon, and we was both immediately arrested, handcuffed. And I said, Obi, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, shut up, kid. Get in the back of the patrol car. And we sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. Now friends, I want to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this was happening. They got three stop signs, two police officers, and one police car. But when we got to the scene of the crime, 
There was five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years and everybody wanted to get in the newspaper story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment they had hanging around the police officer station. They was taking plastic tire tracks, footprints, dog smelling prints. And they took 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. They took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner, the southwest corner, and that's not to mention the aerial photography. And it was after the ordeal we went back to the jail. Opie said he was going to put us in the cell. He said, kid, I'm going to put you in a cell. Give me a wallet and your belt. I said, Obi, I can understand you wanting my wallet, so I don't have any money to spend in the cell. But what do you want my belt for? He said, kid, we don't want any hangings. I said, Obi, did you think I was going to hang myself for littering? Obi said he was making sure, and friends Obi was, because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. Took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll the toilet paper out the window, slide down the roll, have an escape and get away. Obi was making sure, and it was about four or five hours later that Alice, remember Alice? Still the song about Alice, and she come by, and with a few nasty words to Obi on the side, she bailed us out of jail, and we went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning, when we all had to go to court. We walked in, sat down. Obi come in with the 27 8 by 10 color I'll see pictures with the circle scenarios and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. He sat down. A man come in. He said, All rise! And we stood up. And Obi stood up with the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures and the judge walked in, sat down with a CNI dog. He sat down. We sat down. Obi looked at the CNI dog and at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures looked at the CNI dog and Obi began to cry because Obi come to the realization that this was a typical case of American blind justice. There was no way the judge was going to look at the 27 8 by 10 colored map. It didn't matter. Because we was fined $25 each and we had to pick up the garbage in the snow. Of course, that's not what I come to talk about. Just thought I'd mention it. Thought I'd talk a little bit about the draft. And for those that don't remember or weren't there or don't know, back in those days, we used to have a thing called the Selective Service System. Which meant that when you was a guy and you turned 18, you had to register with the selective service so that you could select some kind of service that might be of interest to you. If your choice was none of the above, they would help you by making a selection for you. And to do that, they had buildings all around America and they had one up in New York on Whitehall Street where you used to have to go in, get injected, inspected, detected, infected, neglected, and selected. And I remember I had to go in there one morning a long time ago for my physical examination. So I got good and drunk the night before. Because I wanted to feel my best when I went in that morning. I mean, I wanted to feel like, I wanted to look, I wanted to be like the home American kid. And when I went in that morning, I was hung down, I was brung down, I was hung up, I was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking things. And I walked in, I sat down. They gave me a piece of paper, said kid. See the psychiatrist, room 604. I went in there. I said, shrink, I want to kill. I mean, I want to kill. 
group. I want to see blood, gore, guts, veins, and my teeth eat dead, burnt bodies. I mean, kill, kill. And I started jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill. And he started jumping up and down with me. And we was both jumping up and down, yelling, kill, 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 kill. Till the sergeant come over, pinned the metal on me, sent me down the hall, saying, you're our boy. I didn't feel real good about it. But I proceeded on down the hall, getting more injections, inspections, and all kinds of stuff that they was doing to me at the thing there. And I was there for two, three, four, five hours. I was there for a long time, going through all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things. They was inspecting, injecting every single part of me, and they was leaving no parts untouched. But I proceeded through until I finally come to see the very last man. I walked up, I said, what do you want to see me about? He said, kid, we only have one more question. Have you ever been arrested? And I told him the story of the Alice's Restaurant Massacre with five-part harmony, full orchestration, all kinds of other phenomenon. He stopped me again. He said, kid, did you go to court? And I told him the story of the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows. He stopped me once more. He said, kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Group W. Now, kid. I went over there, Group W. Group W is where they used to put you if you might not have been moral enough to join the army after committing your special crime. There was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking people on the bench next to me. When there was mother ravers, you know, father stabbers, and father ravers. There was father raper sitting there on the bench next to me. I mean, these was mean, nasty, ugly, horrible, crime kind of guys. And the meanest, ugliest, nastiest one, the meanest father raper of them all, was coming over to me. And he sat down next to me and said, Kid, what'd you get? I said, I didn't get nothing. I had to pay $25 and pick up the garbage. He said, Kid, what was you arrested for? I said, let her in. And they all moved away from me on the bench there, giving me the hairy eyeball and all kinds of stuff, till I said, and creating a nuisance. And then they all come back and shook my hand. We had a great time on the bench talking about crime, mother stab, and father raping. We were smoking cigarettes and all kinds of stuff, having a good time. Till the sergeant come over. He had some paper in his hand. He held it up. He went like this, he said, Can't this be back on 47 words and names and says, Well, no time the crime detail, the crime you got to say, but ten tune about the crime, the rest of the officer's name, kind of thing got to say, and he talked for 45 minutes. And nobody understood a word he said. But we had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils on the bench. And I wrote down the massacre like I was supposed to, and I put down my pencil, turned over the piece of paper. There on the other side of that piece of paper, in the middle of the other side, I mean away from everything else on the other side, underlined, capitalized, and quotated, read the following words. Kid, have you rehabilitated yourself? I went over to the sergeant, I said, Sergeant, you got a lot of call to ask me if I've rehabilitated myself. I mean, I'm sitting here on the bench. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm sitting here on the group W bench because you want to know if I'm moral enough to join the army, burn women, kids, houses, children, villages after being a litter bug. He said, kid, we don't like your kind. We're going to send your fingerprints off to Washington. And friends, somewhere in Washington, enshrined in a little folder, is a study in black and white of my fingerprints. They're still there. They've been there 50 freaking years. But I'm not the only one. They've been adding to the collection recently. 
So the only reason I'm singing you the song tonight is because you may know somebody in a similar collection. Even some of you could be in a collection like that. And if you ever find yourself in a collection like that and you don't know what to do, there may be only one thing you can do. Well, there may not be anything you can do, actually, but there's something you can try. And that's to be wherever it is you are as you were. Stop whatever you're doing, take a moment, and go something like this, just say, you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. That's it. Just singing a couple of bars at Alice's Restaurant. Imagine one person doing that. Probably not worth collecting. But imagine two of them trying to get married in Texas or something like that. I don't know these days. Or... <laughs> Or three of them out in Idaho or Utah or something. Who knows? Or maybe 50. Maybe 50 people a night. Maybe 50,000 people stop whatever they're doing, start singing a little song. You get enough people doing something like that, even the people collecting will start joining in. And when you get a song worth joining in on, no matter what side of the aisle you're on or where you come from or who you are, it's what we used to call a movement. <laughs> Now one of these days, one of these days somebody's gonna write a song like that. Might even be somebody here tonight. It's not this song. <laughs> I can barely remember it myself. <laughs> but while we're waiting for that one to get wrote, we can practice on the one we got. It's not that hard. It goes something like this. You can get anything you want. At Alice's Restaurant You can get anything you want At Alice's Restaurant Walk right in is around the back Just a half a mile from the railroad track You can get anything you want At Alice's Restaurant No, no I mean that basically sucked you want to end war, you want to change the world, you got to be worth collecting. <laughs> so we'll wait for it to come around again, give it another shot. I'm still not proud or tired. Okay, here we go. You can get anything that's better at Alice's Rep. Except in Alice, you can get anything you want. Is a restaurant. Walk right, it is around the back. Just a half a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Da -da 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 -da. At Alice's Restaurant. somewhere in 1966. In 1967 it came out as a record. And somewhere along 1968 I got a phone call from a very well-known movie director, a guy named Arthur Penn, who had just finished a movie called Bonnie and Clyde. And he talked to me on the phone. He said, Arlo, most people think you're making this stuff up, but I live in Stockbridge. I know these people. I gotta make a movie of that. And sure enough, that's what we did. And so you need to understand, when we made the movie, the cop in the, in the movie, some of the clips we might have been showing, I'm not sure. But uh, the cop in, in, in the film, he's not an actor. That's the real cop, that's Officer Obi. He decided, he talked to me in 68, he said, Arlo, if anybody's gonna make a fool of me, might as well be me. The judge in the movie, that's not an actor. That's the real judge hand, and these guys, we all got together and recreated our event, you know, and it was sort of incredible. And one of the things that happened, the first few scenes we were filming was me and Officer Roby. And we had not seen each other since that day in court some years before. And you could say we weren't on the best of terms. 
<laughs> we were polar opposites in every way. We're on different sides of every issue that you can imagine. So we had nothing to say to each other except for the lines that had been given us in the script. We were reading those, but we didn't talk. Until one day, about two weeks in, he comes up to me and says, Guthrie, if you hippies can get up at four or five in the morning, go through this wardrobe and make up crap, do this stuff all day into the night, it can't be all that bad. And we became friends. And we stayed friends until he passed away many years later. He's gone now, but uh, he was a good friend. He was a good guy. And one of the things that uh, you should note, if you ever see this film that we made, don't look through it, just the story. It's really what's on film, is two guys have nothing in common. Everything is opposite. We don't agree on one freaking thing. But who working together for a couple of weeks and end up being lifelong friends. The world needs a little more of that. It's not that hard to do.